Hello everybody, it is Ed and today I'm going to be reviewing A Game of You, uh, one of the most interesting Sandman stories to have ever come out. And I'm very, very happy that I read this because I think this might be my favorite Sandman story so far. Now this story, once again, like the previous selection of the volumes, does have a very cohesive story that comes together to form one large narrative. The difference between this one and the previous volume is that the previous volume was a more cohesive narrative. It felt like one story. It felt like I could just read the whole thing straight through. It was as if there weren't even scene breaks. And it also contained Morpheus as the main character. In this one though, He's not the main character. He's barely even a side character. He's not even there for maybe, uh, maybe not even for 10% of the story, which is interesting because what does Sandman mean then? What is the Sandman universe in that case? But that's a question for another day. It, it, I think that it was a good choice though. It was very interesting to do that because now we see some different characters in the spotlight. And the reason I found that the story was so, so cool is because of the ideas that it provokes. Now, this is one of the most confusing, intricate pieces of art that I've ever read, just because of how Confusing it is, I just don't have an idea of what it means. And so while I go through the story, on the surface level, it's a very interesting story, but then you try to think of it as in a metaphysical perspective, and then you start to become confused as to what exactly does this represent? Now, I know that it's evil, but and I know it does this and this and this, but what aspect of reality is the actual manifestation of this story? So you start to wonder these things and you get a lot of interesting answers. And just for that reason alone, I found it to be just really, really awesome. Another thing I really want to mention about this, because of course there's a story in it. Um, I will be talking about the story a little bit, but that didn't really shine out to me too much. It was really just the context behind it. Uh, one thing that I didn't want to say, is that I think this is the best written Sandman story, just because it really felt like an author disappeared into reality in order to write this. There were a lot of points where we could have seen the author put out and uh, show off his you know his viewpoints in real life of, of certain political things and I really found that it was interesting and really realistic to what the characters would have done but what they actually did in these scenarios it, it was very realistic everything was treated with proper respect and I really thought that it was very cool now onto the story so at the beginning it was a little bit confusing because right at the start I was really really confused as to the positioning of each of these characters we did figure it out but it took me quite a while so that was a slow start to be fair um, and then we start to go into a kind of dream reality hyper state where in this scenario, we start to become confused as to what the context is for the situation. And that's the toughest thing about Sandman, I think. It really feels like he does not give us enough context to fully understand what is going on here. And so it did take me a while to understand, but once I understood, I realized, ah. Now we do get two different viewpoints. So we get the viewpoint of the main character and then the viewpoint of the side character. The main character is basically 90% of the story. I found her very interesting. I found that what is going on really cool but the difficulty I found is that it felt like it was trying to condense the epicness or the scope of The Hobbit into just this one little thing and not even half of it is, is taken up by this actual adventure. So it really felt like this really grand scale epic adventure which was squandered on this really small little book that really didn't have too much content to it. She traveled a lot, but overall we really just saw the cliff notes of what happened, which there's nothing wrong with that. The only difficulty is that this is an epic story and so I, I initially expected it to be a lot more epic than it was. And personal at the end, it, I, I don't mean like personal like as an in introspective, I mean that it focused on a couple of characters, we didn't really get to know them that well, but it was just kind of the interactions between these characters and I found them amusing, but I didn't find it really meaningful much. So there's a lot of points where I really did feel like it neandered quite a bit and it, it kind of just waned on a little bit longer than it should have. And it's not a big problem because it was still entertaining and I did find a lot of this just a lot of fun because the characters seem to just be fun, but it didn't really mean much. By the end, we do get a couple of plot twists, uh, a couple of rapid plot beats in succession that were just interesting to see. The difficulty was that we didn't really last and sit on these plot beats for enough time for it to be meaningful. It was meaningful for about one page before we realized that it didn't, like we weren't gonna touch on it again. We, it was just gone from our minds at that point. So that stuff happened and then we moved on to the final big reveal of what was going on and what was finally going on was awesome. I, I really think that that was a very smart way of playing it. I think it was a great plan. And I think that it paid off. So this I entire idea is really cool. And this is the idea I don't really wanna review too much just because I haven't figured out what it means yet. What does this mean? If you know, please let me know in the comments down below. What did the final villain represent at the end? Right after that, we do step into something that seems to be like very, very small. It's just a rock, but then it turns out to be this really big epic plot point that we did not even see coming. So when this plot point happened, we did go back to the other characters and finally we come back to them. And these other characters, now they're very interesting and I did find this passage to be marvelously interesting. Just endlessly uh, rereadable and just, you can just keep trying to identify. I think I read this passage like multiple, multiple times, like maybe 10 times, just to try to understand, try to glimpse at what it was trying to talk about because it was quite obviously so substantive and I just couldn't figure it out. 
but I did re like learn more each time I read it. Uh, but it is a great passage. It's this black page over here. Uh, I'm not gonna reveal anything, but it is just marvelous. Deeply, deeply engrossing. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, anyway, so we, we left from that and I found that awesome and then we kind of connected the two plot lines. They converged into this great big epic plot line that was just kind of squandered and then we kind of, we, we finally see the great Morpheus return. And that was, that was fun. That was quite a bit of fun. And that did make up for a portion of the epicness that was squandered. I'm not so sure what, what to take until what to make of all of that, but I did find that he was a very interesting aspect and that this other theoretically interesting aspect wasn't really touched on too much. It was just kind of half explored. And that's good enough for me because Morpheus is just a lot of fun to be with. And then finally we kind of end the whole thing in a very confusing way for us, un unless you read it like 50 times, maybe then you'll understand it more. And then finally we have a couple of chapters right at the end where we come back to, to whatever was really going on in the real world and we kind of have an epilogue. And this epilogue is very interesting. I found it to be very smart and uh, I really, really, Remember, the stuck in my mind. I don't, I don't even need to read it to remember. It was just interesting, and I found it to be really just expressive and interesting and thought-provoking in a lot of ways. So overall, this is probably my favorite Sandman story. I'm gonna rate it three stars for now. It might increase to four when I look at it again very, very soon. Um, maybe uh, that's good, maybe that's not. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Am I rating this too low or high, or what do you think? For this, a three star means really good. It means very, very good. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. And also check out my channel to see my previous Sandman videos. Uh, if you like any of those or you like any of my fantasy reviews, please consider subscribing. I would really, really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the book and what you thought of the review. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.